Hey, me and G. Today we're in the cheer closet and we're doing some extreme spring cleaning. Let's get started. Well, it's mostly clean. We hope we inspired you to clean out your closet this spring. Are you ready for the best Friday ever, Bishop Gorman? Because BGTV is coming at you in five, four, three, two, one. Bishop Gorman. I'm Amelia Kuhn. And I'm Abigail Gaisick. And, and this, this is BGTV. BGTV. Today is Friday, March 22nd, and it's our first show back from break, which is also our St. Patrick's Day show. How was your vacation, Amelia? It was amazing. I spent my St. Patrick's Day hanging out with my family and wearing green. But Abby, I actually don't even know the real reason behind St. Patrick's Day. Well, good thing Owen is here to teach us more about the real meaning behind St. Patrick's Day. Let's take a look. Oh, say, man. <laughs> Ow! Why'd you pinch me, man? Because, because it's St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day. Day! What's the purpose of St. Patrick's Day? Let's, Let's find out. Wow. Ireland is beautiful. St. Patrick's Day happens every year on March 17th and is a big celebration for St. Patrick, who is Ireland's patron saint. What is this, bruv? It's a flying head! Whoa, St. Patrick's Day gets a little out of hand sometimes, but it's known for having parades, concerts, and Irish dances. They wear green clothes, put up shamrocks, and enjoy Irish food and movie. In Ireland. Oh no, no. Ireland. Shut your mouth. St. Patrick's Day is extremely important because it's a public holiday. People start the day with church services to honor St. Patrick for bringing Christianity to Ireland. After that, everyone gets together for fun parades with big floats, music, and lots of colors. These parades show how proud and united the Irish people are, and they bring in tourists too. Outside Ireland, St. Patrick's Day is celebrated in many countries, especially where there are lots of Irish people with strong ties to the Irish culture. Big cities like New York, Boston, and Chicago have famous St. Patrick's Day parades that attract millions of people. It's a day for everyone to enjoy Irish customs and remember St. Patrick's legacy. Tally ho, bosh. Go searching for that pot of gold. But let's not be caught by the leprechauns. Find the four leaf clovers. And remember, Happy St. Patrick's Day. Wow, thank you, Rock of Jacob and Stone. That brings a whole new meaning to the celebration. Something else that is coming up to celebrate is Easter. This upcoming week starts Holy Week, which is a time dedicated to the devotion of the Passion of Jesus Christ. Gabby went and interviewed Miss Wellington to tell us more about the Sacred Week. 
Hey VG, we talked to Mr. Sinclair about Holy Week. Let's see what he has to say. As Catholics, Holy Week is the holiest time of the year. It begins with Palm Sunday, the entrance of the Lord and the waving of the palms at parishes, and then it continues throughout the week, culminating in the sacred Paschal Triduum, which is Holy Thursday, begins that's uh, sundown on Holy Thursday, followed by Good Friday with the veneration of the cross, and then Holy Saturday with the Easter Vigil at night after sundown. And then the next day is Easter. Good Friday is not just a day off from school, uh, which it is, and that's wonderful, but it's a day off with a purpose. It's to stop and to reflect and to thank Jesus for his sacrifice for each and every one of us. No matter who we are, no matter where we come from or where we're headed in life, Jesus died for me and for you and for everyone. So may we take that day and thank him profusely for his sacrifice, which was love, because as he said, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Thanks, Gabby, for helping us understand the passion's importance. Speaking of importance, this course request due date is coming up, and there are many new classes that are available for freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. Dina researched all the interesting classes that are now available to enroll in for next year. Hey VG, I'm Nina. And I'm Grace. Aren't you so excited for the new electives next year? I'm missing new electives? Yes, you are. We talked to Ms. Carden and Dr. Chow about some of the new electives for next year. Let's, Let's check, check it out. The Women of Faith is a new senior theology elective, and the goal of the course is to look at how women in Old Testament and New Testament, as well as women in the early church, went through these things to help us also apply those qualities to our own lives. I think it's just a really good opportunity for students to look at scripture in a different way. To have a whole course dedicated to that is really ex exciting, and you should really take it. AP Music Theory is available to students who are able to read music and have some background in either performance or reading. I'm excited to be offering AP Music Theory because we've been trying to run it for the last couple of years and seeing what we can do to expand the program. It will entail a lot of note reading, analyzing and understanding music of different styles and bringing it all together so that we have a cohesive understanding. Don't forget, the deadline for course requests is April 5th. Now let's pass the ball over to Kira Braun for sports. Kira. What's up, Gales, and welcome back. In case you missed Gorman Sports over the break, here's a quick recap of everything that went down. Baseball spent the week in sunny Arizona, playing a total of three games and coming home with two wins. They beat Tucson Magnet 8-0, Liberty 6-3, but lost to Saguaro with a score of 0-6. Good work, boys, and good luck on the rest of your season. Even though our winter sports have wrapped up, many of our own athletes have been named to the 2024 Nevada Prep All Southern Nevada team. Ryder Elizaldas, Nick Jefferson, and Jet Washington named for basketball, Jacob Norcross and Chloe Mead named for wrestling, and Addie Carr and Elias Bate named for women's basketball. Kenzie Holton made second team for women's basketball, and Harrison Smith, Nia Webster, and Noah Westbrook were all honorable mentions in their respective sport. Additionally, our very own Elias Bate was named the women's basketball 5A Offensive Player of the Year and the women's basketball Gatorade Player of the Year. Outstanding work, Aaliyah. Coach Cheryl Krimpetich of the state champions women's basketball team was named Coach of the Year. Big congratulations, everyone. Keep doing amazing things. And remember, once a gale, always a gale. Outside of the G, March Madness is in full swing. UConn will be entering as the number one seeded team and defending their title. But needs to watch out for big competitors such as Iowa State, Illinois, and Auburn. Personally, I'm rooting for Washington State. Go Cougs. I can't wait to see how everything shakes out this year. Well, gales, keep a lookout for those games. Congratulate your classmates and keep it cool. This has been Kira Braun, reporting for BG Sports. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kira. I can't believe March Madness is finally here. Me too, Abby. To get our students excited, Athena played March Madness trivia with Mr. Fish's seventh period AP Gov class. Let's see how well they know basketball. Hey, Gorman. I'm Athena Hovanesian. I'm Shane O'Hanley. March Madness is around the corner, so let's see which history class knows their trivia the best. So, the first question, which team has won the most national titles in history? Come on, Tanner. We have a, we have a brave hand. Yes, Tanner Taps. UCLA. That is correct. Yeah. One point. Who is the most recent team to repeat as national champions? Hey, back, back, hold on, back to Tanner. Who won last year? UConn. 
That is incorrect. You can have one more guess. Is it Duke? Wrong. Oh, the answer is Florida. Okay, question three. Which of these cities has never hosted a final four? Chicago, San Diego, Denver, and Charlotte. Daniel? San Diego. Wrong. Yes, Joaquin? It's Denver. Wrong. Charlotte, this is what he said was wrong. Which school has the most overtime games in history? Yes, Tommy? Is this Syracuse? That is correct. Last question. How many players from BG have played in March Madness tournament? What does everyone agree on your last guess? They said 12. 12? Wrong. It was nine. How many did they get right? You guys got a 50%. Hopefully you don't do that bad on a gov test. Wow, our AP Gov class obviously doesn't have enough time to watch basketball. Well, that's all we have for today, Gales. I'm Amelia Coons. And I'm Abigail Gasick. And, and this, this is your BGTV. BGTV.